Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. I'm your host Lily Fifield and you're watching Somos Uno. Today's special guests are here to help us get informed and inspired in the hopes of putting us one step closer to that American dream. After meeting with them, we hope to introduce you to the great people that make up our diverse communities and city and country. Today we're going to meet award-winning author, parenting topic expert speaker and influencer Mari Tere Bellas. Also, we have a creative entrepreneur, Lilia Felotocaya, Lilia H, who loves to empower women through health and wellness. And lastly, we will be having a special interview via Skype to speak with Marco Gutierrez of Mutual Omaha Mortgage to discuss the market in Colorado. This is Somos Uno. Okay, our first guest combines her two life passions, writing and motherhood. As a parenting influencer since the fall of 2014, she's a contributor to dual language schools, organization, and multicultural kids blog. She was also named Hispanic Style 2018 Latina of Influence and received a Puerto Rico blog award under the education category. Joining us now is Maritere Vegas. Hello, Hola, thank hi. you for being here today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been uh, a pleasure and I'm excited to be here with you. We're excited to have you. I feel like this is a topic that needs to be talked about more and it just doesn't come up. Why is that? Why aren't more people talking about this? Um, well, I think that what's happening now is there are more um, studies that are being done mm -hmm. about the benefits of raising bilingual or multilingual There's an children. There's more of an awareness. It started mm -hmm. maybe in, um, I'd say like in 2011, 2010. Mm -hmm. um, and consequently, that's how my first book, which is an e-book, it was yes. um, Raising Bilingual Children mm -hmm. in Spanish and in English. And it was published by Simon & Schuster. And it was because of the studies being done mm -hmm. uh, about the benefits and the advantages and that we're all born with a multilingual brain. So we should be uh, taking advantage of that. And yeah. the benefits for children are immense. There's so many of them from cognitive yes. um, to, you know, knowing how to deal with um, social conflicts and, you know, resolve things and uh, academically. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just many. I feel then, like let alone yes. having a job like you that yeah. you can do in Spanish and in English, all that, you know, it's... Well, it's something here locally that I feel it might come up a little more, maybe not necessarily other parts of the country, but here, locally, it is yeah. a big issue. It's something that should be talked about more and parents should be informed. How did this all come about? Um, well, my children, when my children were little, mm -hmm. there was not a lot of information for parents. So, you know, over 25 years ago. Uh, so. I was asked to write a column for La Opinion newspaper because I knocked at their door <laughs> and, you know, thanks to my dear friend Monica Lozano, who at the time mm -hmm. was um, the editor and then became the publisher, um, and she's like, why don't you write it? And mm -hmm. so I started writing kind of like my experience of raising my children with three mm -hmm. cultures because my husband is Greek American. Oh, wow. Um, and I couldn't find any resources to help me deal with the, how to find the balance yes. between the two, you know, the three yes. cultures and the two languages mm -hmm. that they were being raised. So I, you know, I talked about in my column my experience, what was going on at my house, and then I would add some facts that I would find in a library and stuff like that. And so luckily, parents today have so many more resources, yes. and it's wonderful. Yes. And you're one of them. You have this book right here. This is a great resource, something physical they can have when, you know, you don't have that time to be on your devices or something that you can share. You know, it's beautiful to be able to read this out loud, maybe as a family. What all can they find in this book? Arroz con pollo and apple pie, two classic staples <laughs> exactly. there. I mean, you it says it all in the title, very <laughs> yeah. Latin, very yeah. American. What can they find in this book? Um, lots of stories mm -hmm. about um, families that have uh, raised children 
with two or three cultures or two or three languages. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily they're all Latinas. I have yeah. an Indian family that is raising their children with Spanish and English as their first language wow. because they feel like anywhere in the world mm -hmm. that they go, someone is going to speak in Spanish Latin. or English. Yes. So, um, and I also, you know, my, my purpose with this book was to show um, that no matter what our socioeconomic background is, mm -hmm. we all as adults have to adjust to being in this country, whether mm -hmm. it's um, the United States or Spain or mm -hmm. you know any other country Very in the world, situations. we have to adjust before yeah. we can help our children adjust. And it's important okay. to know how to help them because that um, um, you know helps them not to feel so anxious or different. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I'm different because I don't speak English or I don't speak German or yes. you know. So, and we don't want that. We want our kids to embrace all that and to really. Uh, feel like they accept others and that others accept them. I think that's a really good topic to bring up that you said the parents have to do it. A lot of the time, it's the younger kids. They learn the language quickly. They learn everything, and they end up helping the parents. So the parents don't necessarily feel a need to adjust as easily as a child would, right? Exactly. And I think what happens, too, is, you know, some parents that come here, they they find themselves having two jobs and it's mm -hmm. just too difficult and they're all in the same environment where everybody speaks Spanish. Yeah. So they kind of don't, but it's so wonderful when children uh, see that the parents are accepting the culture mm -hmm. they have adopted and also uh -huh. preserving the culture where they came from. Yes. That's a good example for our children. That really is, I love that. I hadn't thought of that before because the child might be able to adapt a little easier if they see the parent is able to do it. We're the number one example for our kids. Yes. So if we're doing it, they're going to do it too. So what is this here? Luisito's <laughs> Island. It looks like this might be a version for children. Am I uh, right? No. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> no, this is actually my first bilingual children's book, which I just found out that it's been nominated for an award. So I'm really excited. Wow. It is yeah. um, a project that I, a collaboration that I did with um, a program called Read Conmigo. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are... Um, a biliteracy program from mm -hmm. um, an, an Infinity Insurance. And it's a great program because it's a subscription that parents can join for free. Okay. So every so often during the year, they send uh, books in Spanish or bilingual books. Free. To, for free. Wow. Completely free. <laughs> so I, when they asked me to write this book, uh -huh. I couldn't say no because no. there were like over 200,000 families subscribed wow. to it. And that's the next step for me. I, I, I want to write more bilingual children's book. And yeah. this was right on the heels of Hurricane Maria. And uh -huh. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like my little love letter to my little island. This is really cute, of course. Luisito's, Luisito's Island. Luisito's Island, La Isla de Luisito. Yes, that's really nice. So how can people watching this sign up for the subscription where they can possibly receive your book, right? Uh, it's readconmigo.org mm -hmm. and or readconmigo.com. Okay. And uh, yeah, they go in there and they can subscribe to it. And it's and, free. And it's free and it's wonderful. This and is a good first step, like you mentioned, for the parents to take to help their children. This would be a great first step for exactly. them. Exactly, exactly. You know what? Puerto Rico right now is going through a lot. You seem like a very strong woman that's went through a lot, a lot of changes that they're having. And a lot of people have changes going to different places and adjusting. And that's just part of life. Exactly. And it's nice to have little things like this to help you and guide you along the way. Exactly. Thank you very much for being here today with us. I'm really excited to hopefully get to read this. Of course. <laughs> I brought it for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Introducing S1 Connect, Synergy One Lending's mobile app, the digital way to verify your assets to purchase a home. Download in your app store today. Step one, click on automatic check. Step two, select your institution or search manually. Step three, enter your username and password to receive a security code. Step four, click save and continue to submit your verification of assets. Synergy One Lending, a lender committed to speed, ease, and expertise.
Okay, now our next guest is an entrepreneur that decided to start her own creative wellness space to bring women together in Barrio Logan. From there, she set up workshops and services for women's health and wellness that include women's circles, exercise and nutrition, spiritual practice, breast and reproductive health education, very important, and miscarriage support groups. With us now, we have founder of Saludable Latina health and wellness space, blog and podcast. What a title for my fellow Tocaya, Lilia. I know. Thank you for being here. Lilia, I know you didn't know this, but a lot of Latinos know this. You are my Tocaya. It means we have the same name. Yes, no sabia, <laughs> but thank you so much. And it's very rare to find a Lilia. Yes. We're good and we're rare, yes. and they have two for one today, so it's going to be a good show. <laughs> yes. So tell me all about Saludable Latina, which translates to healthy Latina, which is something we all need to be. Not if you're Latina, but I know Latinas, we need to focus a little more with all those tortillas and good stuff we like to eat. <laughs> so tell me all about it. <laughs> yeah, so Saludable Latina started with actually wanting to create a space for women and really in reality any type of woman that needs the support for creating healthy habits as we know we get so used to la tortilla los elotes <laughs> and los chicharrones so we're really good at Staples. having exactly we love that food condiments um, but we also realized that we're very uh, a risk for certain health conditions so I started Saludable Latina to be able to create awareness with a variety of health topics in women's health and wellness reproductive health nutrition lifestyle um, but it also started too because I went through my own personal miscarriage and I didn't okay. see enough services um, being provided around certain areas. I felt a little lost, so I mm -hmm. said, there has to be something more than just staying at home and trying to get better. So you have miscarriage groups. People can come together and talk about their experience. Yes, um, okay. one of the things I would like to support through Saludable Latina mm -hmm. is to create the miscarriage support groups, okay. um, which I tried to look around, and I think the best that I found was March of Dimes. I tried to reach out, uh -huh. left a couple voicemails, some emails, but I wanted more of an interconnection, yeah. in-person support, locally. spirituality, and locally too yeah. as well, because sometimes you have to travel, you don't have the mm -hmm. time to travel. So and I you're figured already out, going through a lot. Yes, it's emotionally hard. it's Emotionally and physically, it's a lot mm -hmm. on the women, um, and that's why it's important for women to have some type of services available. So I was able to manifest a little studio space in Barrio Logan. Very and that's cool. Where I'm that's creating. a big deal. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it's been a lot of hard work. I can imagine. <laughs> yes. So you you have a physical location now where women can come in, and not only for miscarriages, you talk about you know making sure you eat healthy, making sure you're mentally healthy. Yes. So how can people come? Can they just show up to your location if they need help with something? How have you gone about this? So I'm still strategizing how can people actually come because okay. I do have the 9 to 5 lifestyle of work. Of course. You're trying uh, to do it all. Yeah, so yes. I'm actually accessible after work and by okay. appointment only. Um, usually people can contact the phone number listed on Instagram okay. or, the in, or, or the email listed on Instagram and as sal well. Saludable Latina. Saludable Latina, yes. Okay. Um, and that's how they can contact me. And usually we also coordinate workshops and events. I collaborated a lot with other creative entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to bring um, acknowledgement to the womb well wellness. Um, a lot of women don't have a connection to their womb and it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you went through a miscarriage or you're going through fertility issues. It's to be able to acknowledge your womb before that phase of your life actually starts. I completely agree. I know that a lot of stuff you know, that happens in our body, it's just all mental and really thinking it through. So I can imagine how that can be helpful. I've also heard, you know, minorities it's not that we have the most health issues. It's that sometimes we ignore them. I know Latinos, we try to be like, oh, I got a home remedy for this and that. And they can help for a lot of things. Yes. I know that, but not for everything. Yes, yeah, so you are correct. We do have our holistic health practitioners, yeah. and we also have our Western Med. And I'm a big believer on blending both yes. to be able to have doulas work together along with our gynecologists. Mm -hmm. But there's still a very thin line when it comes to gynecology practice and fertility doulas. But I think as an individual, especially women of color, if we can have someone guiding us from a gynecology perspective and then a fertility doula mm -hmm. for fertility awareness and education and making sure you're supporting your fertility and getting to know your menstrual cycles, Fertility often gets stigmatized like I'm not trying to get pregnant yet, yeah. but it's usually your overall health. So we mm -hmm. need to connect with that yes. from the very beginning before we enter into our 30s, 40s, and 50s because there's these different phases that we're not knowing. So if we can have a combination of both worlds together, you have the best support 
in the area for the women's wellness. So I personally also went through that. I was seeing my gynecologist, but I, I wanted more and I needed more. And I also wanted spiritual connection. So I started tapping into connecting with holistic health practitioners, doulas. Mm -hmm. I started connecting with uh, meditation and prayer because yes. all of that is actually part of your physical health. So there's a the mm -hmm. saying that I say, if your physical goes ill, so does your soul. So we need mm -hmm. to nourish both ends to make sure we have a good balance in our wellness. They really do need to be balanced to be yes. able to have it all. So you, I know that you said, you know, you're going to have an event coming up that you'll be participating in. If people maybe don't have a chance to go see you at your location, is this a good time where they can come meet you? Absolutely. So I am very happy that we are creating a part two to You Are Home. Thanks to our LA sisters, um, Jasmine and Cindy, who came down from Los Angeles to create mm -hmm. an event in San Diego, Por Vida Cafe. We collaborated all together as these women and entrepreneurs who are in the wellness space, virtuality space, creating mm -hmm. something for the community. So Eric and I have chosen to do a part two at Barrio Logan. It's mm -hmm. gonna be in Por Vida Cafe. Thanks to them, they're sponsoring the location. Okay. And we also have to say thank you to Maxa um, and also to, to Cecia Osteria because they're gonna be sponsoring some wellness snacks after the sounds event. Sounds good. Sounds like yes, a party. Yes, <laughs> it is. So anyone that's interested in coming, we will uh -huh. be providing that event. Um, the so tickets. it's for uh, just anyone to come. Absolutely, and yes. You, you said there's some women entrepreneurs coming. What exactly is the event, though? You so Are the, Home, you said? Yeah, so the, You Are Home is in an order for someone to kind of have, like, oh, I want to kind of connect with people. I want to mm -hmm. start knowing what I need to do to heal maybe my past traumatic experience or I want to connect on a different level. I want to be able to find a resource in the community. So You Are Home really brings that dynamic together. We present different entrepreneurs like journaling. Um, I do the womb healing session, which mm -hmm. we actually do chants and breath work and acknowledge the womb. And we're going to also have a Reiki healer come on site. Her name is Sonia. So she's going to be there doing some Reiki healing. Like some good energy yeah, going it's good on energy. there. So, como yeah. curanderas, like we're saying, <laughs> let go of the negative yes. vibe and bring in the manifestation of wellness and energy that we want for our divine. It sounds like a great event. If anyone's watching, they connected to some of the stuff you can you were saying there. Once again, when's the date? August 25th, 2019. It's going to okay. be from 1 to 4 at Por Vida Cafe. This will have aired by them, I'm sure, because of social media. We're going to be sharing this. They'll get out there, and I'm sure that they can all connect. And that's amazing, honestly, just an event to have good energy spread all over. Yes, we need more energy to be spread because as you mentioned before, um, in our Latino community too, mm -hmm. we go through a lot yes. of, and we're taught also too, yes. to be las guerreras, right? To yes. be valiant. We're mm -hmm. gonna get through this and we're gonna work through it, but sometimes it always resurfaces and we need to acknowledge in order to heal forward. So from one guerrera to another, from one Lilia to another, thank you for being here today, <laughs> Coca. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Now our next guest has created a space in Colorado to thrive in. Marco is uh, joining us now from Greenwood Village to tell us how the market's currently looking and how he can help you achieve the American dream of home ownership. Hola Marco, muchas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros hoy. Saludos desde San Diego. ¿Cómo está todo ahí en Colorado? Muy bonito y muy caluroso. <risa> Sabes que estamos igual aquí. La verdad que hemos tenido mucho calor. Y la verdad sabemos que por muchas razones gente se viene aquí por el clima. Pero estoy escuchando que la gente no está viniendo a San Diego. Se está yendo a Colorado. Cuéntame qué está pasando. Escucho, Colorado ahorita está primera en la lista de los Estados Unidos para las ciudades donde la gente puede vivir y su dinero vale un poquito más. Cuéntame de eso. Eso sí es cierto. Ahorita el mercado aquí en Colorado está muy fuerte. Eh, específicamente aquí en Denver es una de las ciudades que más ha crecido en los últimos dos, tres años, específicamente en el mercado uh, de las casas y lo de los préstamos también. Eh, Denver, Colorado Springs y Boulder, uh, si mal no me equivoco, vienen siendo uno de los de las ciudades que están en esa lista para las mejores para vivir. Sí, exactamente es lo que vi, porque de las 10 ciudades tenían tres ustedes compitiendo un poquito ahí con Texas. Entonces, cuéntame, hay que empezar. La gente no te conoce todavía. Cuéntanos de ti. Sé que eres de México. ¿Cómo fue tu experiencia llegando hasta donde estás ahorita? ¿Por qué estás tan apasionado por lo que haces? Pues, mire, yo soy originalmente de Chihuahua, México, uh, de la mera Chihuahua, uh, arriba al norte. <risa> Entonces, uh, nos venimos a, a Denver cuando yo estaba muy chiquito y pues progresando en mi carrera de vino y raíces, uh, inicié en lo que viene siendo servicio a los préstamos. Entonces, ya una vez que el préstamo estaba creado, yo manejaba lo que viene siendo ya que documentos que quieren a uh, clientes, cosas así, hacer pagos. Eh, me fui moviendo una vez que el mercado medio se cayó ahí en el 2008, yo me cambié a lo que viene siendo due diligence. Entonces, yo estuve verificando si estas... Lo, las foreclosures de, de, las, de los clientes fueron honestos, fueron hechos correctamente, sino para pues, compensar al cliente de nuevo. Uh, y ahora aquí me encuentro en, en la parte inicial del proceso para ayudar a los clientes a realizar ese sueño de ser dueños de casa, porque en fin, eh, no hay mejor patrimonio que ser dueño de casa para pasar a los hijos. Y en realidad eso es lo que más me encanta a mí de mi trabajo, es poder asistir a estos clientes a poder realizar un sueño tan grande no solamente para, no creo que específicamente para los hispanos, sino que para todos en realidad es algo muy importante y más una inversión de las más grandes que pueden hacer en su vida. Entonces, yo a mí me encanta hacer ese trabajo, me encanta eh, las gracias que dan cuando alguien, pues lo que no pensaban podían lograr, lo pudieron lograr. La verdad que sí, también soy norteña. Y estando tan cerca aquí nosotros, a México, la gente del norte, sabes que sí sentimos, como mencionaste un poco, sí sentimos muy fuerte en el 2008, porque muchos latinos se habían metido a esos contratos que no eran buenos para ellos, que no sabían exactamente a qué se habían metido. Siento que contaste un poquito de eso. Entonces, ¿cómo les puedes ayudar tú? A la gente que igual no está tan informada, me imagino que tú les puedes ayudar paso a paso entendiendo el idioma, ¿no? Efectivamente, en realidad, desafortunadamente en ese entonces hubo muchas cosas de que clientes estaban firmando documentos que en realidad no entendían, que la gente no estaba tomando el tiempo para explicarles, mira, esto es tu pago, a tanto tiempo, etcétera, etcétera. Entonces, lo que más me encanta también de mi trabajo es poder educar a los clientes para que entiendan en realidad en lo que se están metiendo. Mi mejor, lo que más me encanta de este trabajo también es poderles ayudar para que entiendan el proceso y no se metan en algo que va a perjudicarles después. Entonces, yo tomo el tiempo siempre y siempre estoy disponible para poder tomar llamadas y preguntas. Sean mis clientes o no, me encanta que la gente me pregunte porque me encanta educar. Ay, me encanta eso porque mucha gente piensa, ay, le voy a hablar, ya me estoy comprometiendo a algo, pero tú dices cualquier no. persona que tiene una pregunta, que no sabe exactamente si está buscando, si está a lo mejor calificando para una casa, igual te pueden hablar a ti para informarse. Sé que no trabajas solo, tienes un equipo ahí con quien trabajas. Cuéntanos un poquito de eso. Correcto. Yo trabajo con mi socia, es Gabriela Luévanos. Ella tiene 19 años en el negocio. Entonces, entre ella y yo tenemos aproximadamente unos 25 años de experiencia combinada. Uh, los dos somos igual de dedicados a tratar de ayudar a los clientes de la mejor manera posible, tomando el tiempo de siempre explicar la, 
la información que se le está presentando a los clientes y siempre refiriendo con, a, a los clientes con las personas indicadas también, porque también tiene mucho que ver con quién más trabajamos, por ejemplo, agentes de bienes y raíces, contadores. Entonces es muy importante para nosotros tener todo un equipo completo de gente que se puede confiar. La verdad que sí, y se nota en verdad que es del corazón que lo estás haciendo porque es algo que te gusta hacer de la forma que, se, que te expresa. Se nota que es algo muy sincero de tu parte. Y antes de que te dejemos ir, aunque no te quiero dejar ir porque está muy buena la plática, te quiero preguntar, la gente en Colorado que te quiere contactar, ¿cómo te pueden encontrar? ¿Cómo te pueden contactar por los medios sociales o por página de internet? ¿Cómo prefieres? De cualquier manera, yo todas estoy al pendiente, sea mi Facebook, sea mi Instagram, sea mi página de web, sea mi celular. Toda la información está disponible siempre. Yo siempre estoy al pendiente de todas. De cualquier manera, mi celular directo es el 720-883-3379. Pues al parecer, todo mundo quiere estar en Colorado. Desafortunadamente, no estamos ahí contigo. Pero sé que les está yendo muy bien. Y la verdad, gracias por estar aquí con nosotros hoy. Y ojalá nos podamos ver pronto. Mi placer, jovencita. Gracias a ustedes también. Que pasen un buen día. Igualmente. Okay, now that we've gotten our daily dose of knowledge, it's time to wrap up this episode of Somos Uno. I want to thank our amazing guests, Maritere Bellas, Lilia Ache, and Loan Officer Marco Gutierrez for being with us today. For more content, make sure to head to our website, SomosUnoTV.com, also our social media sites. And if you can't get enough of Somos Uno, I know I can't, you can always watch and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you for watching, I'm Lily Fifield. Don't forget, que no se les olvide, we are one Somos Uno.